If you're applying to graduate entry medicine, this video is going to be an up-to-date guide of how you should consider your university choices. If you're considering applying to medical school in the UK and you already hold a degree, you could apply to what we call graduate entry medicine. Now this is a medical course where instead of doing it in the five years, you do four years, you essentially skip the first year, sometimes you slot in straight into second year, or sometimes you spend the first year doing a kind of hybrid of years one and two, and then jump in in your second year and join the regular third year of the cohort. The problem for graduate entry medics is they always get left a little bit in the dark and kind of to fend for themselves to decide what medical school choices are the right ones for them, but also the entire process. So with the students that are on my elite coaching program, the discussions and questions that I'm being asked from my grads at the moment are, where am I eligible to, for my given situation, where can I apply and what's the right university choice for me? So this video is gonna serve as a quick guide to some of the variables that could be relevant to your situation and how to navigate each of those. I will caveat by saying this guide is by no means exhaustive and although things tend to stay pretty consistent throughout the years, some little things might change here and there. So let's start by showing you a list of all the graduate entry medicine universities or GEM for short that are on offer at the moment. So the first thing that you need to do, especially when you're applying to graduate entry medicine, is give them a call and tell them your specific situation and see whether you qualify or meet the minimum requirements to even apply to their university in the first place. It's really important that you do this because people throw away valuable application spots just by not doing this simple step and actually they could have saved themselves a lot of hassle by just one phone call to see that they weren't actually in fact eligible in the first place and no one knows your situation better than you so it's important that you call them tell them everything give them everything about your qualifications and your background and then they can take your individual situation go away and look at it and give you a direct yes or no answer so firstly what if you want to apply and you don't have a 2-1 or a first degree most GEM courses will ask you to have either a 2-1 or a first class honours degree when you're applying. However, Nottingham University is the only GEM course that allows you to apply that they state on their specifications that you can get in with a 2-2. However, if you've gone beyond degree level and you have a master's, they will accept people with a merit at that level. And what about if you don't have a science degree? Well, there are some universities that don't require you to have a science background to apply. And those are Nottingham, St Andrews, St George's, Swansea, Ulster and Worcester, the latter of the two being brand new universities that are starting their very first cohort this August 2021. What about if you're an international student? Not all GEM courses do allow international students to apply. So I'm gonna give you the list of the few that do right now. The first thing I'm gonna talk about are Queen Mary's University London, also known as BART, and also King's College London. Now these tend to vary year to year whether they take international students on their graduate entry medicine course. They tend to ask you to email them and explain your situation and your qualifications, and then they will go away and have a look at it and give you a yes or no answer. And then the other ones that state that they do take international students for their graduate entry medicine course are Newcastle, Nottingham, Oxford, Southampton, Swansea, Warwick, Worcester, Ulster and St Andrews. Another thing that can be tricky when picking your GEM course to apply to is the exams that you have to sit. Because of the examination period, sometimes the GAMSAT, the UCAT and the BMAT, which are the potential exams that you might have to take, do overlap quite a lot, which means that preparing for all of them well is going to be very tricky and either requires a lot of planning or maybe strategic decisions to be made about which of those you're going to do or sit, because really doing all of them is probably not realistic. So universities offering GEM are probably split down the middle in terms of whether they require the GAMSAT, which is an Australian exam. So the universities requiring GAMSAT are Cardiff University. However, this is a GEM course that's only available to previous Cardiff graduates. Exeter, Liverpool, Nottingham, Plymouth, St. George's, Swansea, and St. Andrews. And then the GEM courses requiring you to sit the UCAT are Barts, Birmingham, Dundee, King's College, Newcastle, Sheffield, Southampton, and Warwick. And then there are actually only two graduate entry courses that require you to sit the BMAT. Those are Oxford and the other one is Imperial, although it is worth noting that this year Imperial have suspended their graduate entry medicine course. So there's a lot to unpack there and a lot to think about how you're going to apply and which university is the right one for you. I'd always say for a lot of graduate entry medics, it is worth considering one non-graduate entry option because graduate entry medicine is incredibly competitive. Medicine's a competitive degree to get into already and graduate entry is even more so on top. So it is sometimes worth considering just doing one five-year entry course. It really depends how badly you want medicine. Is it something you could do financially if you were really squeezed to and you had to do a five-year degree? If you can do it and you can make it work financially, it's always worth putting 
sitting in just one of the normal undergrad courses, just because you can almost consider it as a safety option. And really the, the question you have to ask yourself and the one that I ask for my students is, if you didn't get any of your graduate entry medicine offers and you only got one undergrad offer, would you take it? Do you think you could make it work financially? Would you want to do it? Do you want it badly enough that you would make it happen if that was the only offer on the table? And if the answer is yes, then I would consider putting one as an insurance policy just to make sure that you, know, you get in because ultimately the goal is to get into medical school and become a doctor. So I hope that clears things up for you. The idea is to kind of, depending on what situation that you're in, understand what's available to you, what kind of things you can consider, and then go from there. If you'd like some individual help with this, you might want to check out our elite coaching program where we offer one-on-one -on -one support and I help you directly with your choices and support you through the entire journey of getting you into medicine. Otherwise, if you'd like some more useful resources about graduate entry medicine or how to apply tactically, you can watch one of the videos that I did about grad entry medicine here, and then a video on how to apply tactically here. So thanks for watching and I'll see you over in one of those videos.